Hey, there we are. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it might be where you are. Welcome back to the live stream. My name is Jeff Fritz. Today is January 16th, 2020. We're going to write a little bit of code today. How's it going, chat room? Lucky number seven is here. Musical bookworm, good morning. And Kabazi, hello, hello. Thank you so much, Kabazi, uh, very much for your contributions. We got to show, uh, we didn't get to show all of your contributions, but we got to show some of those off at at .NET Conf Focus on Blazor, uh, when was that? Tuesday. Tremendous event. I had a great time. Uh, speaking at that, I was out in Redmond, out at Microsoft Campus, in studio, giving a presentation about some of the work we've been doing here on stream about, about web components for Blazor that look like web forms and how to get your application ready and going and over into web forms. Things to consider, things that you need to know it it uh it went very well. I got some very positive comments um on Twitter in in chat rooms. Certainly um what the heck happened to my camera there for a minute? It, certainly folks really enjoyed my jacket. The Blazer Blazer. They really uh loved that. I got my Twitch hat on today cuz I'm back on Twitch, just on Twitch. We were syndicating out to YouTube the other day. Um but it's good to be back Old just here. Builder just resubscribed for 14 months. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. 14 months with our friend, the Bald Bearded Builder. That's Michael Jolly. He's another one of the live coders. Thank you so much for clicking the button. 
and staying around for another month. I really appreciate that. And we'll make a donation to Code.org, who's helping helping kids in American schools learn about science and technology, computer science in particular. Uh, thank you so much. Did you not cancel that? Oh, well, well yeah, you got 30. You got 30 days now to get it done, so click that other button. It's, it's the one just to the right. Click that button. Hey, Sean, good morning. Good to see you. So um, I, want to, I, I want to answer. I've, I received a really interesting question that I want to touch on. Um, I received a question on, on Twitter that I want to uh, cover, um, and I want to take a look at another pull request we have hanging out here from, from Kabazi um, showing how to test the validator components and get those integrated with the rest of our blazer components and continue moving forward with this and building some more features into into the project as we work here webface good to see you hugo's here hello hello um let me know if you receive those those stickers and things i actually had some return to me um that i was sending to germany um Somebody gave me, missed a line in their address or something, and I didn't quite get the address right, and, and they were returned to me, so I need to reach out and try and send those again. Not yet. All right. All right. What well, when I sent them Saturday, I think, is when I sent them. Yeah, it was Saturday morning, so soon, soon. Um, hey, Etern Eternal Dev Coder, hello, hello. So let me let me start with this question that I got on Twitter. Let me open it up here and roll over to this. Uh, da -da -da -da. Go over here and move the thing to this place over here. Um, yeah, that works, I guess. So my friend Dan Roth, the Dan Roth, Blazer's Dan Roth, the only Dan Roth, there can be only one Dan Roth, um, published some information, public, uh, tweeted about our project, and we got a question in, in response to that. Let me get some music playing in the background here. I nearly forgot the music. How can I forget the music? We need music playing here in the background. We're going to get some music to code by running here today. And um, you know what? Today let's play, uh, let's play Yellow. Let's download Yellow so we can play Yellow. I really need to download all these ahead of time. There it is. This is music to code by from our friend Mr. Carl Franklin. Scientifically designed, engineered these songs are to get you in the groove, get you focused on whatever task it is that you may be working on, whether it's coding, writing documentation, doing chores around the house, doing homework. Check it out. mtcb.pwop.com. Hugo helped us out, executed the music command right there in the chat room. And there's a link so you can get your copy today. And uh, our friend Mr. Carl Franklin is actually, he's doing a road show to cities all over the states at first and then he's going to get into Europe a couple other places as well and be talking about and teaching Blazer workshops check it out I believe it's blazerroadshow.com is the link for that let me just check that link real quick yeah blazerroadshow.com there it is, Carl Franklin's Blazer Roadshow, sponsored by Dev Express, and uh, they're going. He's going to be going all over the U.S., and he has plans to get into Europe um, in the in the summer, in the fall. I'm not quite sure when he gets outside the states, uh, but they're going to be coming, coming soon. So we got this. Um, oh, and thank you for the follow. Is that? Let, let me try and pronounce your name here. Um, wow. Rishaba Sethia, 16? Um, thanks so much for joining us. No Texas? Um, there's no Dallas in here? No Houston? No, no Texas. That's interesting. All right. Um, and he's going to be in Philly in just a couple weeks, too. So... Uh, thank you, Hugo, for setting the project command there. Um, so we got this question. Um, I believe that that's Karash. Is that how you pronounce that? Stelzy! Steel279 just resubscribed for 15 months. Wow, 15 months. Times fly C-sharp high bot. 
<laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Stelzy, for those 15 months, and we'll make another donation to code.org. Let me get into this question, because I think this is an interesting question that, um, back to Dan, that, that we can talk about here on stream, asking, is it possible to have old jQuery components such as carousels and sliders as Blazor components? Sure. Those are those are definitely something that can be done. You're going to execute some JavaScript interop. You're going to ship that JavaScript down to the browser. You're still going to call into jQuery um, if you want to continue to use those jQuery components, but be able to execute them, be able to have a, a component that is markup that you run server side. The, the real way to do it would be to completely rewrite the component, take the jQuery out, take the JavaScript out, and make it all C-sharp, like a carousel or a slider, and do it that way. Um, both are possible. It might be easier to do it the, the jQuery way and slowly remove and replace that with just C-sharp, but doable. Not something that I want to get into right away here, not something that I want to show, but definitely something that would be interesting for someone to build. There's a lot of folks that are um, converting and building Blazor components based on JavaScript libraries and frameworks. So this is something that I would expect to see somebody working on at some point. Maybe not me, maybe someone else, but I would expect to see jQuery components like that available out in the community. Certainly folks like we mentioned Dev Express earlier, um, they're, right, they've got Blazor components that they're working on um, and delivering and are available. Uh, Progress has some as well. Um, I don't know if Infragistics has some, but a lot of the, um, a lot of the component vendors that used to work a lot with .NET are building Blazor components. It's definitely a thing. So, um, so that's that's something to keep an eye out and something to, to watch in our community. There's the awesome Blazor list where you might see something like that pop up. Um, right, where is it? Awesome Blazor. Right, the awesome Blazor list is right there. I clicked it. There it is. And this is a list of awesome events. Of, well, the event that we had. But all the different controls and things that are being built and that are being worked on around Blazor. Let me share that link in the chat room for you. There's the link to Awesome Blazor. So, definitely something to check out and keep an eye on over here. Really great stuff. And there's even some mentions to some of the folks that you see occasionally in this channel, like um, uh, Blazor Mr. Magoo. There's a couple things from him over here, I, if I remember correctly. There. Uh, Flappy Blazor Bird. I believe that's you. That's Blazor Mr. Magoo. So, some fun games in here. I think a couple of these are his. Um, machine learning, mobile, to-dos, others. All kinds of neat stuff. So, check it out. Really great resource over there. So I'm going to come back around and talk about, about our project that we've been working on, the Blazor Webforms components, and start, and well, we've got a pull request to review. Adding validator tests from Kabazi, and all the tests passed. Check it out. We got a green check there. Everything tested and ran successfully. That's cool. One commit with the, with the validators in there. So... We can, uh, we can take a look here, and we should see um, a bunch of unit test files here. Hey, DJ Vortex. Hello. Good morning. Well, good afternoon, wherever you might be. So, looking at this, um, there's 22 files in here, and all of our tests live inside the Blazor Webforms components.test project. And I like that Kabazi put all of the validations into a val right grouped all of the validation things because as a as a group of features, a, a group of components, it's I, I like that they're now in their own folder. Kind of makes sense um, when you look at the project organization that we have here. Let me open it up in Visual Studio. 
so we can see what this looks like. Because we're developers and we write, we write code. We live in Visual Studio, right? Let's go, Visual Studio. Come on, you can open. Where's my code? There it is, and why is it still in Papyrus? Who put this in Papyrus? Why didn't it change back? I don't want to see that Papyrus stuff. Svava is here. What mischief? Somebody left my uh, my Visual Studio in Papyrus mode. We don't like both with it. Don't need no Papyrus. You can take your Papyrus and go away. There we go. That's even a little bit small. What am I doing? What am I doing? Right? Let me fix that. 18. That's better. You can change the font in my editor to Papyrus, to Comic Sans. You can change, force me to change the theme in my editor. Check out those Fritz bits. They're right over, where is it? Right over there. There's the orange, you can see the orange gear there. Click that and you can force me you can force me to do a lot of things here on stream that'll uh, make it a little bit trickier, make it a little bit more difficult for me to write code. But uh, I'm up to the challenge. Bring it on. We can get that done. I mean, I need to turn back on wearing a different hat and all my voice mods here because I am back home and I do have the voice mod uh, hardware and things wired up here so that we can have some fun. Would I write code in Disney font? Um, I believe I have in a custom font. If I can get it loaded in, I would... If I can get it loaded into Visual Studio, sure. If it, I believe it's write code in your choice of font. There it is. For 15,000 uh, Fritz bits, I would absolutely do, do that. Sure. Um, you thought I was fancy, Frank? No. No. No, I, I, Svava, I didn't put it in papyrus mode. Somebody forced me into papyrus mode. And that's what happened. Kidding. So, all right. Um, no, if not fancy a victim, says Frank. You're not wrong. You're... Frank's not wrong. Frank Bruscheros is another member of the Live Coders team. Make sure you check him out. Um, over here on Twitch, there's a shout out for Frank. Click through, give him a follow. Um, so let's see here. I have, right, when you look at our tests, that's where we left off. Um, I have a test solution folder here that has, uh, right now we only have one test project, but each one of the components is in its own folder. And what Kabazi did, and I like this, I like this level of organization here, added a, a folder for the validations component group, then custom validator tests, and here's the test for custom validator. I believe I would, I would prefer calling the folder, this, I, I like giving the folder the same name as the component that we're testing. So data list component list view component, it, right? This is the repeater component. That's the only knit that I have there. It's not too... It, it's you otherwise just nice. Johan! Thank you, Johan, for those 19 months, and we'll make another donation to code.org. Thank you so much for for sticking with us. 15 months. These folks that, are, that have been subscribers for a long time, that's tremendous stuff. Thank you so much for that support. I really, really appreciate it. Okay, so um, that's the actual components. We don't want to look at those just yet. Um, where was that? Back over here. So we have a bunch of these, and each one of these tests, it's really nice the way that, and I, I realized I mispronounced his name, that, that Eagle it has, uh, has been pronouncing. Not Eagle, but Eagle. Um, right? It, it, his component testing framework, it looks like Blazor. So you write some HTML, some, some Blazor markup, along with the actual component you want to test, and scrolling down you write some code that executes 
to investigate that test. So there's this is a fixture. It's the first test. And here's what it's doing. Um, along with a little bit of code. It's not bad. It's right. It goes through and it says after it's rendered, get the component under test, find the input, change it to empty. So the input is this input text element here. Um, and submit the form. Verify what happened. And uh, check to make sure that there are no spans. So easy, easy stuff here. And these all of these tests go through and they run positively. They all run um, and, and they, they all pass. So really great stuff from Kabazi to verify, validate that all of our validators work properly. I've already been through and checked out a lot of these tests. They're really, they're doing the, the simple thing that we want our tests to do. And, and then we're going to merge them. That's what we're going to do. And then, thank you, Janescu. Good to see you. Um, <laughs> let me come back to your question in just a second there, Kizzy. All right, so let's uh, let's get this merged in. So it with the number of files that were here, and when I saw this get merged in, I already checked it out and and ran through and like I said, looked at all the files on the side. So I am going to squash and merge this into the master branch. There we go. Add validator tests, and there we go. They're now in our master branch, and we can have validation that our validators work. That's so meta. Um, that didn't add new features, so I don't necessarily want to cut a new release. But when we're ready for our next release, we've got we've got better tests there that look good. Too late. You're renaming the folders. That's eh, all right. Don't worry about it. We'll we'll take care of that. Actually, it did it because I merged a pull request. It is going to cut a, a release. It is going to. It is going to... Well, no, it's going to try to ship Preview 1. Um, hmm. Hmm. Because we merge th when we merge things into Master, Azure DevOps pushes a release. We're going to want to stop that. Um, right, so if I take a look at the commits here... Right here it is. Added validator tests. If I click this through... And don't worry, moving those folders around is the, the pretty easy to do. Yeah, it's labeling this 040 preview one. Um, so this is where I think we need to update. We need to update the organization of the GitHub repository just a smidge. So that we only push to master when we want to do a release. And we prevent folks from sending pull requests to master. So that the only way that things get pushed into master are when we're doing a release. I think I'm going to do that right now. Yeah, you're right, Kabazi. Um, we should create a uh, a dev branch. Um, let me come to that question from Frank in just a second. So let's do this. Let's uh, nothing I can do now. It's already pushed and it's going to try and do this release and it's it's going to fail. Um, right, if I click over here, yeah, it's it's not going to run the release. Um, that's okay. That's all right. We're gonna we're gonna fix this. We're gonna make it better. Um, Wait, master. What? It might be dangerous. Not dangerous to add a branch here. We're gonna be just fine there. Copper Beardy, good mor uh, good morning, good afternoon. Good to see you. Copper Beardy's another live coder, just like Frank and myself. Make sure uh, you check him out. We'll get a shout out for Frank. Nick Larson as well. Oh my gosh. Another live coder here. Thank you for joining us, Nick. Can I get shout outs for both Copper Beardy and Nick? Um, and there's a question there from Fishing Dev I'd like to queue up as well. Oh my. Um, let me take Fishing Dev's question first. What was the testing framework called that we saw uh, being used there? The testing framework that you see that Kabazi used here and that, that I'll be using um, a little bit later 
If I go into the project file here, you can see this is Razor Components Testing Library. And I'll go over here to, to the GitHub. The GitHub, is that a thing? There it is. And here it is from, from Eagle. There you go. Um, so this is unit test library for Blazor components. You can get this on NuGet. He has a link out to, where is it? There's a link, there, one of these is a NuGet. There it is. For NuGet downloads, you can get a copy of it right there. Let me paste that link into the chat room for you. You're welcome, Fishing Dev. There you go. There's a, the link for you so you can click through and learn more about it. Appreciate the question, Fishing Dev. Thanks so much for joining us today. Um, I, I didn't see you early, earlier, didn't have a chance to welcome you in. Um, let me come to this question from Frank, asking, uh, how has .NET Conf missed it? I can totally ignore the question and keep it for later, just popped in my mind. Okay, I'll, I'll ignore it. Oh, I'm sorry, you wanted me to answer that question. And you blow it! No, I didn't blow it. Um, .NET Conf was great. We had a, a, we had a lot of folks uh, tune in. Thousands of people watched. Tens of thousands of people watched. Um, for our first .NET Conf one-day, eight-hour .NET Conf event, I think it went very well. Um, something that we've learned that, that we suspected and we had some, some data that kind of proved it out was... Um, folks in Redmond, first off, don't like to get into the office before 6 a.m. We know this. Folks around the world love watching our video at 8 a.m. So, there's a little bit of a discussion around, can we move things earlier? Don't know. We'll have to see about that. It's uh, something that I think are, we're very interested in. Lucky number seven is here. Hello. Oh my gosh, I forgot to... Yes, and he, lucky number seven's another live coder as well. I have no idea where you've met Ben in before. Yo, please. <laughs> um, oh, and Kabazi linked the unit testing library as well. Sorry. Um, let me see. Let's see. A bad question. A bad response from the Fritz bot there. I need to fix that Q&A library. I haven't touched it in a while. Um, let me touch up the, the, I'm going to touch up the folder, folder structure, but, uh, I want to get to Kizzy's question. Stelzi asked, does anybody like to get up at 5 a.m.? Yes, absolutely. Without question. Kizzy has a question here for us. So let me make sure I answer this before we go back to editing more code. Kizzy has a, a form and needs to submit that data and return a true or false based on that data. How do you validate that data somewhere without a database using MVC? In MVC, in ASP.NET MVC, um, jQuery is delivered with that. And there's something with jQuery called its non-obstructive validation. Um, right, non-obstructive, I can type, uh, validation. Unob unobtrusive, that's what it is. Unobtrusive. I, I can talk. Unobtrusive validation. Um, da -da -da. In, in web forms, but it's in ASP.NET Core and VC. Um, there. And what this will do... Here, Brad, Brad Wilson's the one to look at because... Brad was one of the developers on MVC at the time. Um, but the parameters that you have on your model that you're trying to post back, because you are posting back a view model, aren't you? Aren't you? I mean, right? That's that's the way you want it to work so that you can have a... Flawless victory. So um, what you'll do is, right, you have these data val tags that you put on the components and it will actually when you configure an obtrusive JavaScript it'll go through and just do it so some folks have it working for ASP.NET Core as well uh, yep so a couple links there that you can check out but the unobtrusive validation will get you there let me check out the server should make a response. 
uh, so this doesn't use server side validation. You, there is a way you can have it do. Um, you can have it do a server side validation first. Uh, there is a. Mm, the whole point of the unobtrusive validation is so you have jQuery do that first pass. The regular expression validation, the comparison validations, those client side ones. Server side, right? If you're using model binding in MVC, and you should be using model binding, um, you can appropriately return that response, right? Um, from the server. So ASP.NET. Um, MVC model binding and you'll see this in the in the samples that are built for you when you do a new controller and you specify that it has um, complete crud capabilities uh, create read update and delete capabilities you'll see the the code that it generates um, uh, come here, come here, you. from body this is doing model binding and you can actually have it inspect. Uh, we're not changing model binding. Um, not type conversion. Complex types. And you're binding to them. No, 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 no. Not these. Not the collections. Where is it? The samples that it generates will inspect and say... Um, is the model model is valid, and if not, it'll return the appropriate errors. Model there, model validation. So this the syntax is identical in MVC. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So client side validation. Right here's how you can hit it with jQuery. Let me pass this back to you. Yeah, model is valid. There you go. So this is for ASP.NET Core. And you can get the interaction happening. So client side, unobtrusive validation as well. Custom client side. Um, and you can have it return those, those errors appropriately. Even adding more complex validations as a method over here. So this is a pretty good article for ASP.NET Core 3.1. The syntax is very similar for ASP.NET uh, MVC. You'll be able to search and find similar topics on that. There you go, Kizzy. Good luck. I'm happy to answer that question for you here. Excuse me. Um, Frankus asks. Let me find that. Where that? Where that question go? There we go. Doesn't ASP.NET have built-in validation controls? Yep. And that's what we're making happen here. So. Um, does this imply a server response can use client-side? You, you have your choice, Kizzy. You can do both. I'm not going to do your homework. Mm. ASP.NET MVC will do both. We pointed you to the documentation. You can read further. Now you're getting into asking me to do your homework. <laughs> Take a look. You're gonna have that that documentation I linked you to has all the answers for you. All right. So um, let's do that little bit of a uh, little bit of code organization we need to do to move things move things around here inside of our. Uh, inside of our project. So let me head over to uh, my copy. That's not it. Uh, this. There we go. Um, I'm going to check out the master branch. I'm going to make sure I have the latest because I don't think it's up to date. There it is. Um, I don't want to move things. Let me move things into the dev branch. You're welcome, Kizzy. Happy to uh, happy to point you point you in the right direction there. Answer questions about you. Clear things up. But there's a point with some of the folks. I, we've had folks who are in in university taking bootstrap uh, boot camp courses. Uh, not bootstrap. They're taking boot camp courses. We're not working on bootstrap. 
and uh, they've asked questions and asked me to kind of do their homework here live on stream. And that's not the kind of thing ethically that I want to support. So I'm always, uh, when folks say, well, here's my assignment. <clears throat> Sorry. So best of luck to you. Happy to answer more questions. Um, let me move the, that one folder that uh, just take a look here. So Blazor Web Forms Components, my test framework is right here. So I like the validations top level folder. I just don't like the name tests on these. Um, and these are good names for the files. Um, I just want to drop the word tests on the end of those. So I'm just going to do a, a rename on each of these. And that's just F2 that I'm hitting to jump right into the uh, rename. There we go. Do I have... Is Karnak running? Yep, Karnak is running. Okay. Um, you got a problem with your code, Copper Beardy? The problem is you're writing it. Okay. Um, so now, yep, it's going to tell me, oh, I've got all these things that moved. Let's add all the things. Um, let's commit a renamed validator uh, component test folders. Not bad at all. Um, and if I go back over to Visual Studio, Visual Studio is actually quite responsive to changes in folder structure and it already sees them here. Um, be before I push this in to master, let me just rebuild and make sure that all the tests run properly here. So I have my Visual Studio configured so that when I build my test project, it will run all my tests. So it already built, it's running the tests now. You can see it right there. And uh, hopefully, don't push it on master, why not? There we go. We're good. PowerShell Freak, hello, PowerShell hello. Freak just resubscribed for 10 months. Um, PowerShell Freak, I um, need to catch up with you. Um, um, and uh, one second here. Isn't it a trigger on the NuGet package or is it merging a PR? It's merging a PR. We'll, we'll fire the NuGet package. There we go. Uh, there we go. All right. Um, yeah, so that moved. Why is it saying it didn't run 20 tests? Why you no do this? Run them. Now, here's a question. Why does the test explorer restore and rebuild? There it goes. Um, doesn't it know that nothing changed? Um... Oh, look at that, my, my signing key. I haven't used this in a while. I need to reseed it. Rerun the git commit. There we go. Um, is that my, that's not my pin. I forget my pin. There it was. Good. And it sees the move, sees that the files are the same. So it does that quietly here. So that's done. We now have our validators available for us out there for our unit tests for our validators. I love seeing that number of, of unit tests increasing, right? And if we go over, anybody can take a look at the pipelines for this. Um, you should be able to, to click through and see them. Everybody should be able to click through and see them. Um, that's, so it's just going to rerun the build here, but it's not actually going to push it. It shouldn't push it. Um, right? It shouldn't. But you, you're welcome to click through and, and see how these are running. If I click to the analytics, you could see my test pass rate. It, why is it red but up 7.1% passing? Hmm. And my pass rate is increasing here. Yeah, we want to see that get even higher, get closer to 100%. 
we had some failures in here because we uh, we were we were still building the pipeline uh, a, a week or two ago. So things are improving. We're looking better here in our analytics. Um, I wish I could just just see the tests. Can I just see the tests here? There we go. Tests in the pipeline, right? Um, I want to see the number of tests. Failed test run pass rate and the ones that are causing the most problem here. Um, I think we're good. We're in good shape here. But everybody's welcome to click through and take a look at the analytics for the project. And you can get to this easily by clicking through the little check mark here on the project and taking a look at the details of it. So... All right. Um, let me see here. Hmm. All right. Um, moving forward, where was I? So we got our commits. Oh, I wanted to put the dev branch in. So let's create the dev branch. I'm going to create the dev branch off of master. So, uh, yeah. So I'll get checkout dash B dev. So I now have a development branch that I can work on. I'm going to push this to origin as the dev branch. And I have my uh, my git configured so that when I push something like that, it will automatically track um, track the, the remote branch for me here locally. So now I want to be able to push things only into dev and the only way to get things into master, into the master branch, is to create a pull request. So we're going to protect the master branch so that nobody can push things into it, like I just did. Um, so yes, branch protection rule on master. Require pull request reviews before merging. Require status checks to pass before merging. Um, <laughs> I don't care about signed commits. We include administrators. Restrict who can push to matching branches. Specify people teams who uh, are allowed to push to matching branches. And right now, uh, nobody can put. I was allowed to push. Hmm. All right. If I look, what happens if I type? Uh, organization administrators and users with the maintain role. These members can push when required status checks pass. Uh, oh, I guess I can because of this. All right. Um, I guess that's all right. So I, it is already protected so that... it. Um, I don't want people to be able to submit pull requests to the master branch. Right? I only want administrators to be able to do that. Um... I don't think we can change that. Yeah. All right. So let me go back over here. Um, okay. Just keeping an eye on how things are. I thought I saw a message come through over here that I needed to address. Uh, hmm. Let's do this then. I'm going to go over, I want to take a look at the issues I started working on. I started working on, on my other laptop. I'm going to need to finish it, get it pushed somewhere that I can share it. But I started working on this one, repeat columns. So the data list component has the ability to have columns repeated for your uh, collection of items that you're going to output. You can have them output in columns and the columns can go either vertically or horizontally in that order, which then changes where the separators are placed. So this has become a very interesting problem to solve. And I was working on this on the flight home yesterday, and uh, it's not quite done yet. It's not ready for me to push, and I don't have it on this machine. Um, so I'm going to have to come back to this in a, after I get things moved over. Um, but this is something that I, I was tinkering with just to try and see if I could get it to work. Um, let's see. The, in our samples, it's starting to get a little unwieldy as to how we navigate around them. So it'd be nice to have a tree control on the left of our samples that shows, 
here's all the components that we support and how to navigate around them. So I'm, I would like to see the samples moved around a little bit there and I've marked this as help wanted as well. Um, in case anybody wants to do that. Um, let's, uh, we don't support grouping yet on list view. This is the, the component that we particularly are working on and we showed off and it, and it showed very nicely as part of .NET Conf. Um, with our, with the new layout template feature that we had merged in from Blazor Mr. Magoo, this now looks identical to the sample that I was showing off, the, the code that we generate. It's very, very good stuff. But part of me wants to do the grouping here. This is going to be really tricky to build. Really tricky. So we had started on the events for list view. And I'm trying to think what would be a good good place to jump back in here. Um, right, I have... what? Where are my branches? What's it called? Feature list view events, right? Um, let me get that updated. Uh, merge in everything from master. Okay. So we had been working on the events for the list view component. And I don't think we finished all of them. I know we didn't finish all of them. Because there are some around around CRUD that we didn't finish. I could continue down there or I could start on another component. What do you think, chat room? Um, do you think we should start on another component? Might be more fun to start on another component. Um, and come back to the list view. I need to provide some documentation for the validation controls that, that are now part of this. Hmm. Uh, give me a one in the chat room if you think I should move on to another component here. I think we could move into either details view or form view. We could do some research and start building one of those two components. You want me to move on to another component, says Delzy. Okay. I could even move into menu, actually thinking out loud that would be a good one to move or we were I was just mentioning about tree view I could do tree view move on yeah at Kabazi we're thinking on the same line here if I want to put that on the samples to have that in there as something that we could use eternal dev coder thinks menu um Blazer, Mr. Magoo, so good to see you, my friend. Thank you for, for tuning in. Be, um, you know what they say about Blazer and Mr. Magoo. There can be only one. Yeah, something like that. Thank you so much for your help. Uh, both you and Kabazi. I, I'm changing up the look here, so I'm not even going to update the crawl up at the top. We're, I'm working on a new look and feel for the stream. Um, and... Uh, I want to make sure that folks that do contribute get uh, appropriate credit here somewhere in the user interface or even just below here on Twitch. Um, let's start with tree view. Tree view is going to be a little bit more con a little bit more complex, but I think we can have some fun with it. I'm seeing a little bit for tree view and a little bit for menu. Tell you what, let me just run a quick poll. New poll. Which component should Fritz work on next? Um, menu, tree view, form view, um, yeah, let's start with those three. I th think those are three that we can talk about here. Um, and I'll tell you what, 
I'm going to mark this as subscriber votes count twice. There you go. So there's your poll. And we'll take a look at this. I do want the tree view for the samples, but the tree view is going to be a little bit more complex. So where I think the menu, I might be able to get through a little bit faster. But the tree view definitely has, has more impact. Look at that. Tree view is out to a big lead. The menu is a tree view. Oh, look at how meta that is from Blazer Mr. Magoo. Look at this. Mmm. That's deep. That's, that's, wow. Mmm. Wait, wait, let me, let me explain something to you. Um. That's, yeah, that's definitely something. Do the validators need a little bit more work? They do. They do. Um, but I don't have a problem jumping around here a little bit so that we get into some interesting things to show on stream. The range validator needs to be built. Um, some of the, these others. But we're at a point with the validators that from if if somebody wanted to build those off stream, like, uh, like Kabazi did and want to send them over, that's great. That definitely goes a long way. Um, there, there's something that we can, that we can template. We can just copy paste a lot of, not all of, but a good bit of, and, and make that, um, make that work. And I'm not sure that's interesting to show on stream, to show that hands-on working. Where is the DAG view? DAG view? The, are you referring to the the uh, the grid view? The grid view is going to be one of the last ones because it's one of the most complex. All right, it look it looks like uh, chat room says let's work on the tree view. So let's uh, let's take a look at that. Caparino, you're always welcome to ask a question here. The AMA flag is on. Anybody in the chat room and friends, if, if you're watching at home, you're wa always welcome to ask a question. We'll queue it up and, and pause at an appropriate time in our development here. Dr. Scott! Is he here? No, Dr. Scott is not here. Mr. Scott. Any of the Scots. I need... Um, I had I had some recommendations come through, not from Scott, but from some from some other folks for some additional challenges and things that I could do here on stream. Um, grid view is a list view with a, with a little bit more intensity there. There's, there's some templating and things you can do with the grid view that are uh, a little bit crazy. Um, so the, I had a couple of recommendations that were provided um, from our friend Beth Massey, the Beth Massey. You saw her as part of uh, .NET Conf on Tuesday she suggested that I needed more Rocky Horror picture, so, picture Show sound effects I think that's a tremendous one to do to get more Rocky Horror Picture Show sound effects Blindfold Coding says Blazer Mr. Magoo not quite but there was also Prevent Fritz from looking up things on the internet for 20 minutes or so that would be crazy that would be a little crazy for me. You can't look anything up. You can only do what's in front of you. Um, so I think we can do something with that as well. Um, make it so. That would be a great sound effect for folks to be able to trigger. Yes. So I'm going to take just a couple more notes here um, about Rocky Horror Picture Show. Uh, sound effects Star Trek sound effects particularly make it so from Picard I do it I thought I had Picard's make it so don't I have that I thought I had that I don't see it hmm yes I do make it so but to allow folks to be able to trigger that um We can do that. Vim mode. We already have Vim mode, Sean of the Dev. Um, actually, it's not explicitly Vim, but I could I could add that as an option. But more Star Trek sound effects. Yeah, yeah, okay. Blindfold coding is just dead. No. No, gosh, no. 
Caparino has, has a question here. Let me go to Caparino's question before we start working on the tree view. Um, grid view is a full-time job. Grid view is a crazy, crazy one to build. It's going to take us a better part of a week or two to build it. Caparino's question. Has an application want to create a client area? Client area? To create new controllers and UI or reuse UI from main app. Ah, okay. So are you saying, let me make sure I understand your question. You have an MVC application and you're using areas as part of this? Or you have an administrative area and you have a client area? Um... If you you have that split between here's what the administrators can do and here's what the the users the rest of the users can do, um, I'm a big fan of putting all of your administrative things into their own area. You can share um, your layout across areas into the default area where all the rest of your users are going to be. But inside of that areas folder in MVC, you can create your own controllers and views that inherit from the main layout. So you could do something like inherit from the main layout, but have an administrative layout that adds some sort of indicator that you're in admin area, right? Maybe it's maybe it's you change the background or you change an icon or you add an additional label at the top that says admin administrator area so that folks know you're in you're in as an administrator you know don't show this screen to anybody that those types of things so um not necessarily multi-tenancy kabazi but any kind of an application where you have an administrator area and you have client areas user areas right so that administrator area where you're administering the users maybe you're you have access to be able to do it you know in the shopping cart example maybe you have access to uh cancel orders right as an administrator things like that that only administrators have access to do that specific area of your application yeah but put that in its own area so that the users are in the main area so shared views just a viewer is, is asking about um you could do that have, right by by shared views, I'm assuming you're referring to the different features become available or are disabled depending on your access level. That is certainly something you can do. However, um, what you sometimes run into is when you share views um, as the developer, you now need to be aware of the security constraints as you're building them. All of the security constraints, so it could get a little confusing in what you show, right? And, and you need to have some good solid tests to make sure you don't inadvertently make something visible to a lower level security that shouldn't have access. Um, um, one second here. Got it text message I need to respond to. There we go. All right. Um, the thing that I find, it, it's hard to reuse controllers because of custom policies. Um, then don't reuse the controller. Inherit from the other controller. Controllers are just classes. You could write a base controller that has similar features and inherit from one into the other and end up reusing that logic. So you're not copy and pasting, you're not reusing the controller, but you've got that base functionality somewhere else and you're inheriting it and painting as need be. Authorized attributes are, are a good thing to use as well. Janescu, very good to point that out. Make sure you authorize access appropriately into your controllers, yes. The less code that you can write, the better. Lucky number seven puts it very well here. Reduce, reuse, recycle. The best bits are recycled bits. Recycle them all. So, multi-tenancy is, is another animal altogether. Um, and the folks have some very interesting ways to do that now with filters to be able to determine 
which tenant you're logged into and how to navigate around. Back back in my day, back when when I was when I was younger. Wait, wait let me let me explain something to you. Um, we actually passed the tenant ID. Um, as part of the user object and we would inspect the user object grab the tenant id and paint everything appropriately in the way early in in the in the page life cycle so um and we had the tenant id then available for all of our queries going forward so <sighs> yeah all right let's talk about tree view so we're going to work on the, the first of our navigation controls down here, tree view, and I liked, I liked the, the path that Kabazi sent us on, set us on, as far as naming our folders, um, having a top level for the folders that kind of groups these together, because I think that helps us with the organization, and for our our project here, I'm gonna, I'll organize the test folders here for these components. Um, but when I look at our things at the top level of of our components project here, it's starting to get a little crazy. I, I, I see all of these items, and, and it's not a lot yet. But I'm going to add tree view into here, and it's going to start to get a little wacky. So, um, oh my gosh. Now we've got old man discussion here in the chat room. Look at this. Look at this. When I was younger, I was telling young whippersnappers to pull up the pants. Really? Really? <laughs> you go! <laughs> Get off my lawn. No, no, let me do that right. Get off my lawn. That's totally a thing. All right. Let's talk about what the tree view is, and let's start our investigation into the tree view what those features look like and start building appropriately. So um, I start with a control samples folder over here and let me add one for tree view. Um, and I'm going to need to create a link to the tree view control from up here. Uh, yeah, I don't have navigation controls laid out in here. I, can I? Can I clean up some of this now that I have this in here? Do you, do you mind? I'm gonna just clean this up a little bit. And I'm not saying that any one control is more important than the other, but uh, just trying to make this a little bit easier to read. So I don't at some point, we're going to need samples for how these validation controls look in web forms. Um, navigation controls. So we need to add the list for those. And they are these three right here. So we'll put those in. What do you see this? What do you see this? Ready? Watch this chat room. You ready? Watch this. I'm going to hold down Alt and just drag straight down. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. You know you love it. Oh, Visual Studio for the win. Oh, my gosh. Love it. Um. One thing I forgot to do in changing namespaces, now all validators are in Blazor Web Forms Components Validations. No, that's fine. That's fine. So they're all here. That's that is what I'm looking at. And, and exactly, so Kabazi makes it, it is, it, and please don't, don't apologize. I like what you've done here. And let me put the comment up here so that folks can see. Um, this is perfectly fine putting these over here so that we can find them and reuse them inside of our code uh, have them organized to be used a little bit easier we're going to have a snippet that we're going to create so that we have a using set of using statements called in uh, made available for our blazer components 
that use these bla for our Blazor applications that use these components. Ah, that's better. That includes the appropriate namespaces. I'm I'm really happy with how you have this organized. Let me push that up so that you can see the validation components that that Kabazi helped us with here are all in this namespace. That's great. I like it. After I top the start of the line, I should have been able to press end and type at the end of all three lines. Um, oh, really? Oh, really, Hugo? So if I go li, you're telling me if I press end, see, it, it doesn't go to the end of all three at the same time. So, no, nah, didn't work like that. All right, so let's wrap the tree view in an anchor tag here. Now, is it, I should be able to, can I do this? Doesn't that work? Nope, not like that. Is it that one? Nope. Nope, it's not letting me do the wrap with. Oh well. Um, so we're gonna send folks to, um, <laughs> pick a URL. We're gonna go down into control samples, tree view. Oh, you make me sad. That's so lame. Add web form. Default. There it is. Oh, that's so sad. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not even gonna look at that right now. I'm, I'm. Sixty percent of the time, it works every time. And it didn't work that time. Tree view default, and I don't even want to put the default on the end. Okay. And we'll end that anchor so we can navigate to this. So that's fine. All that. Uh, this has a master page, and there is only one master, right? There can be only one. Darn Skippy. this like that all right now we can write our content for our tree view here an emperor palpatine um, quote we'll get that sound effect hucking fackers good to see you uh, thanks so much for tuning in, for joining us today. Um, Greetings, my excellent friend. So good to see you. VS Code does that. Nelson! Wait, is that... That's not... That's not the Nelson from the Microsoft Business... Standards of Business Training, is it? Different Nelson, right? Bit close to the wire, that handle. <laughs> it is. It, you're not wrong. <laughs> All right, let me copy the way that I do some of these other ones over here. So I have a simple look and feel for this. So this is the tree view control homepage. I don't have other usage samples yet, so I'm just gonna comment this out. Uh, why am I blanking on the, on? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I remember how to do web forms commenting. Oh, all right, here's a simple tree view. Uh, bound to a collection. Now, tree view is a hierarchical, higher, 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 hierarchical. Yeah, I, I can say this. Is a hierarchical uh, component here. Um, and I think we need a different set of sample data to show off in the tree view. So let's start off just with a tree view. <clears throat> What's the sample, right? The default, the canonical tree view look like? Look at this. We've got leaf node styles, node styles, events, parent node styles. Oh, look at these root nodes, selected nodes. And here's the thing. We already know how to do most of these style things. So we're going to be able to reuse a lot of that. Good. Um, but we're going to have some fun here drawing this out. 
products categories. That's not bad. The beauty of a tree view is that each node is itself a tree view. <clears throat> so you only need to write it once, says Mr. Magoo. Yes. This is the right this is where we're gonna recurse. Right? And and this is gonna this is actually gonna be an interesting problem we're going to solve for for younger developers who, who haven't seen a little bit of recursion in code. We're gonna end up calling ourselves several times here. Use reflection to list the assemblies, namespaces, classes, and the project. That's not bad. But if we're going to do products categories, that feels something that's a, a little bit simpler and it's not directly tied. We're, we're not adding complexity to, to the project by doing products and categories. Um, so I'm, I'm going to extend the sample data just a little bit. Um, down here. Ah, crumbs. In the same in the code that I was writing on the plane home, I actually expanded the list of widgets to twelve. Hmm. Um. That's fine. Um, let me add a widget category, a product category. Just so we have two layers here. Um, and we'll look at more complex structures later. Um, <laughs> um, I'm seeing Sean's rant there. Um, so if we have a, a category, Right. Um, you know what? I can actually make this hier hierarch higher. Oh boy! Hierarchical list come out of the category. That's not bad. We can do that. Um, so we're gonna have an ID. We're gonna have a name. I don't really need a URL. I can start with just that. Um. An I enumerable, yep, of type widget, and these are the widgets in that category, so that we can show those on screen. Um, and now I'll create another public static, right? Category, simple category list. Uh, I, no! Right? Yes, yes. It has a get. Um, return new. Right, something like this. And we'll have a new category. ID equals one. Name equals, uh, it doesn't matter what these are, right? And But the widgets is going to be a new widget array. Ah, oh, come on, Visual Studio. Oh, how are you, why are you being so mean? That's the end of that one, okay. Um... So new widget. Uh, let's see, name equals widget one, right? Um, last update equals date time today. Something like that. I'm not even showing the last update on these. I don't really need last update for this. What other property do I have there? Price. I don't care about that right now. Um, so we'll just do this. Okay. And that formatting is awful. So we'll, we'll make it better. 
will improve it. Make our code stronger. All right. And this will be category two. And we'll change this to uh, four, five, six. That should be two. Four, five, six. Okay. So I've got two categories that I can show. I've got this hierarchical structure here for categories that I can present on the screen. Good morning, Douglas Mankey Design. Welcome. So now I have an additional way that folks can interact with some data, right? It's, it, it's overly simple data. We could have done a very complex example um, showing the folder, the files in the folder structure here, which might have been tricky to run for a unit test because we don't necessarily have access to the folder when the unit test is running. I'm thinking particularly on that um, DevOps pipeline or when they're running down here inside of Test Explorer. Um, I could have run reflection across the entire project and bring it back assemblies, namespaces, classes. Um, but I would be writing a lot of code to get that, that complex object graph that doesn't add too much more value. Um, I'm, I'm a strong believer in Yagni with this project. You aren't going to need it. I don't need that complex code. So let's just put together a simple, simple object here that we can iterate over and present. Um, how's it going, Douglas? So, right, it, honestly, I forget how to use the ASP.NET review. Um, site, docs, Microsoft.com, um, tree view control, tree view class, that's Windows control, Windows, Windows. Oh, come on, show me them web controls. There we go. That's the ticket. Tree view control. All right. Um, code examples demonstrates how to set up the frames for the second code example. Oh, no. Frames? Frames. Really? Y you built frames for this? Are these really the questions that I was called here to answer? No, these are really the demos that we were called here to read. You make me sad. Hmm. Dark Doc Mode. Yes, Sanad Meskin. Yes, it's um, it's available up here under Theme, and you can change the theme that you'd like for the docs. Yes, yes. And it's quite nice, if I do say so myself. Um, let me see here. Let's do... Okay, thought I saw something up here. Um, so this is actually hard coding these tree nodes. Hmm. While that might be a thing, this is the one that I want to be able to support. And that's going to be fun to do. Who does that? Don't do that. Data source ID. Why? What? What? Friends, don't use data sources like this. If you want to make me angry, use data sources. Don't use data sources. You wouldn't like to see me when I'm using data sources. Okay. Um, I can't believe they included this as a sample for .NET Framework 4.8. Why would they do that? Yeah, Hulk mode. That's right. No, no XML data islands. No. Are you kidding me? Inconceivable! It, why did they put bad practices in the docs? Ugh. All right. Let's start with the simple example with ASP tree node. I don't like th this means we're going to need to support frames and targeting um, with the URLs. Tell you what, I'm even. You ready for this? You, are you watching? Are you ready for this? Do you see what I'm doing here? Look at this. 
Look at this. Um, not even bound to a collection. A simple tree view with inline. Oh my! Uh, I know. With inline nodes. This sample is lifted directly from the documentation at. Uh, yep. Give me that URL. Please tell me there's no link here. Uh, tell you what, I'm just gonna click that one. Grab that. Uh, a href equals this. And we'll just put that in there so that you can see it. All right, let's see what that looks like. See what the HTML looks like and start talking about how we're gonna go about building this. Uh, brightness in your room decreased by 70% when Doc's dark mode is turned on. I know, isn't it great? You still have XML data islands on a customer site. Oh my gosh. XML data islands. I, I abused I abused those so bad when I was a developer back in 2000. We did some really neat with things with those with XML data islands and XSLT, but uh, not a great idea anymore. Uh-oh, what's the clip? Oh, data sources. <laughs> Free at Ajax, Ajax. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, let me click that. What? Friends, don't use data sources like this. If you want to make me angry, use data sources. Don't use data sources. You wouldn't like to see me when I'm using data sources. What? <laughs> I love that. Friends, don't use data sources. Let's like do this. that. If you want to make me angry, use data sources. Don't use data sources. There we go. Thank you. Thank you for that clip. In embed that clip when referencing data sources in the demo. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is not a Xamarin project. No, no. Um, so let's see what this looks like. Step through and and start taking a look at what we can do to get some HTML out of this that we can start rendering and turning into, right? Not only do we have tree views here, we have tree nodes that we need to generate as well. Oh, yes. Which means we're gonna need our child content capabilities from Blazor here. Um, Eternal Devcoder asks a good question, and I, I should clarify. Not that familiar with web forms, what was wrong with the data source? So the data source is a component that you place on the screen in your, in your markup. Let me go back to it over here. Um, is a component that you define in markup that loads data for you um, outside of code. In this markup, it loads up and it puts, in this case, this XML into this data component that is then bound to this control. You have zero ability to test. You have zero ability to, to error handle this. You have no insight into how these things behave at all. You have no way to change how the things that are bound to it, in this case the tree view up here, you have no way to change that that interaction without changing markup, right? You can't do dependency injection with this. There's, like I said, there's no testing capabilities. There's tons of problems. I, I should do I should do a blog post about the death of data sources. Um, 
don't do this. That this, these are not. They're not supported by by other frameworks because there are better ways to go get this that are testable, that you can compile and make sure it work, right? If my data file, if there was a extra, um, excuse me, if this data file was typed wrong, right? If, if it was misspelled, um, there's other places where there's data connections, SQL connections, SQL record set uh, interactions, you have no way to test and verify that those are behaving properly until it actually runs the page. So by moving those out into someplace that's executable as code, it's it's a bit more maintainable, a lot more maintainable. <laughs> it was widely used because you can drag and drop it onto, a, onto the designer, the user interface designer, and... Uh, end up having a, a nice interaction building a, a user interface. So here's what our tree view looks like that we we put together from the uh, from that sample. Now a couple things that I see here. Um, this is JavaScript interacting over here and oh oh it, it, it gets better. Look at that URL that it's clicking. JavaScript tree view toggle node and it's passing document get element up by ID. Oh, friends. We're going to have some fun with this. Crows! Crows 4K just resubscribed for 17 months. Thank you so much, Crows, for that 17 months. Oh, my goodness. And we'll make a donation to code.org. Oh, yeah. Look at all that inline JavaScript it generated. It's so wonderful. I know. There go the horses. Horses love JavaScript. Um, I'd really like to avoid generating this JavaScript. Because we're doing this in Blazor. I'd really like to avoid this. Ooh. Yes, Blazor to rule them all. We, you're, and Blazor Mr. Magoo is right. We don't need script to do what it's going to be doing. Um, so take a look at what we've got here. Skip link. What's skip link? Right, so ahref. I'm not sure what that is. Right, look at this whole thing here. Skip navigation links. Well, that... Oh, wait a sec. No, where's skip navigation links? I don't know where, where that is. It's hidden, whatever it is. So I'm not too concerned about it right now. If we just want to get this thing started, it's generating a table for each one of the elements. And it's pulling from a, oh, here's, here's our first problem. This image is being pulled out of a web resource. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hmm. We're gonna need to figure that one out. Oh my gosh. I am not myself just gifted 10 subs. I am not myself. Thank you so much. That's our friend Bobby Johnson from Auth0. Thank you so much for those 10 gift subs into the channel. Uh, gosh, things were things needed to get a little exciting. Wow. Very cool. Um, 10 gift subs to, to friends here. Um, we're going to make a big donation to code.org, and um, these folks are going to get 17 emotes. Uh, turn off the ads in the channel, and most importantly, you're going to get to throw emotes at my face here. The Chronic Phoenix Dimer 525, used by me, just a viewer, Dr. Argus, Parathon, Jet Boot Carl, uh, Correa is a god, James Montemagno, uh, at Lu is that Lugiana? Congratulations, you all just got gift subscriptions, thanks to I Am Not Myself, Auth0 Assemble, that's a, 
event coming up by the, our friends at Auth0. Oh Best of my. luck to you with that event. Congratulations on planning that and Dr. putting that Stop. together. Thank you so much. Mind right. Hello, hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The James Man Montemagno. Not just any old James Montemagno. Those other James Montemagnos are nothing compared to the James Montemagno. Thank you so much for the gift subs. That was very kind. All right. That was some excitement. Um, so we're going to need to figure out, right, these web resources, how you embed those resources. We're going to need to move those because that isn't really a... It, it is a thing, but it isn't a thing hmm. with Blazor. They do, we don't generate these web resource AXDs. But these images are the default images that you get for collapsing the tree view. Let's go back over to the code, right? Um, so I think we need those images to come along for the ride here. And we're gonna want to figure out, well, we don't need to figure out where to place them. We have a place that we can put them. We're gonna need to put them into our project so that we can make that happen. So, um, hmm. okay. So each one of these tree nodes, it looks like it created a table for that. Look at this, div style, div style. The question, hmm, the question we're gonna need to figure out, chat room, is, oh, dude, oh rats. Do we want to output this div style like this each time? Or do we get a little bit more appropriate? Do we get a little bit more um, modern web development with these? Part of me says folks rely on the H and one of the tenants, tenants of this, not tenants, tenants are people that that live in an apartment and pay the landlord. Those are tenants. Tenants, the principles of this project has been, let's mimic the HTML as close as possible. So part of me thinks that I'm gonna to need to mimic the HTML. The IDs for these, I'm not concerned about matching. I kind of agree with not doing the inline styles, but. but part of me wants to be faithful to the original HTML. We could add class to it, yes. Absolutely, we could add classes to these. Yeah, the inline styles we may need later on when there's more indents. Okay, so I'm gonna take this source code and I'm gonna leave it um, you know what? No, let's do this. I got an idea. I got an idea, chat room. I'm going to copy the source code. Um, I think that's all of it. Let's copy it. Go back over here to this. And let's add an area at the bottom so that we can reference. Here's what that, that generated. Right? And I think I did this. I, I did this originally with the list view, I thought. Right? Yeah. Code. And, oh yeah, look at that. That just screams a pain in the neck to maintain. Um, uh, let's do, generates the following HTML. Oh, it's so good, it's so good. And I'm gonna right click and I should be able to, I can't paste this HTML. Uh, where is it? There was a paste is HTML here. I don't see it. Where is paste is HTML? Save the markup. Oh, look at some of that. This is this is the kind of thing. Look at that URL right there. That's the kind of thing that gives developers nightmares. Right? This thing, that URL. 
It's illegal in nine countries. It is. There's some GDPR thing happening. No, there there isn't. I didn't say that. It's no. Take that back. Houston, we have a problem. Th- that has nothing to do with GDPR. That is, it's an uh, it's a randomly generated pointer to a file inside of it is not. Yeah. We yeah. Don't do that. Um, I shouldn't. I shouldn't even oh have said. My. I, I know. I, mean, I shouldn't have said that. Um, let me see here. I, paste is HTML. Absolutely was a thing. What are you? What are you doing? Um, paste as HTML. Right. Copy as HTML. Yes, please. Put that back in. Copy the selected editor text to clipboard. No. No, I want to paste as HTML. Where copied text introduces... Introduces what? New blank lines... No, 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 no. I want to paste as HTML, man. Um... Oh, sure, update that. I could use an update to my Blazor support. Why can't I paste this HTML, man? That used to be a thing. Right? Because it'll automatically escape all of that code, all of the angle brackets that it gave me. Um, it was a thing been removed. Can I do that in... Will Visual Studio Code give me that? Um... Right, and can I, uh, yeah, paste, want to paste this HTML. Does somebody have an extension? What is this? That doesn't look like SQL Server. Nice icon. Um, extensions. Paste as HTML. Right, because I wanted to escape all that stuff. I don't want to find and replace the angle brackets. That's what I'm going to end up having to do here, isn't it? Go away. All right, fine. Fine. Have it your way, Visual Studio. Uh, let's put a carriage return after that one. See, and I also want, I also want this, right? Let me zoom out just a smidge so we can see it all. I don't care about the readability right now. Um, format selection. Where is it? Better. Um, let me do a control H. So I want to find the less thans and replace with uh T in the selection. Replace them all. Thank you. Um, we're going to find the greater thans and we're going to replace them with GT. Thank you. Find. Oh, we did this backwards. Go back. And we need to replace that with that first. Yeah, because the selection went away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now let's do this, and it goes to LT. Thank you. We're going to find that and replace it with GT. There we go. All right. So now I should be able to see what that looks like. Let me rerun this. Regex to the rescue. <laughs> quotes. What quotes? Don't need the quotes. So, tree view. Taking a long time to run there, friend. Oh, it didn't format it right. Why? 
because I didn't put I didn't put breaks at the end of the lines. So let's do this. Um, it, that should have been like pre-formatted there. Oh my! All right, if I change that to pre, is that better? Ah, there we go. I should move the tabs back. That's better. Now we can see it a little bit. All right. All right. Um, Simo has a, a comment here about the about the styling that we have here. It's not a bad it's not a bad comment here from Simo. Um, the compatibility I'm trying to maintain is in the back end C sharp, so the style implementation should be the most modern possible as it doesn't affect the API. Yes and no. Yes, I completely agree with you. Let's generate some modern stuff. No, because there are folks who have built some JavaScript and some styling on top of it, on top of this, that depends on the way that it's rendered. I don't have that as a hard requirement from any any customer or any application. Excuse me. Um, but you're not wrong. And, and this goes towards a, a feature that I want to add... I don't know if we should add it now or if we should add it in the future, but a feature to be able to activate modern styling, modern rendering, right? Generate the HTML5 CS3, CSS3 compliant rendering and use that instead. Swapping out the, the rendering for that so we have appropriate style sheets and things. So your markup is still the same, but you end up with more appropriate, better rendering, I think is a tremendous thing to do. Yes, I completely agree with you on that, Simo. But I, I think that should be a feature that you opt into. So that by default, we still behave the same, but... Perhaps it's an app setting that you can turn on in your configuration that says, make this modern rendering. Cool. Okay. Then I'm on board with that. That makes absolute sense to me. I think that would be really great. Yeah. That, oh, that's a great way to describe it, Simo. I like that term. And, and let me make sure I put this up here because that is a the right way to refer to this. Compatibility mode. Yeah. Compatibility mode, web forms versus 2020. I like it. I like it. The output compatibility mode. Yeah. Um, can you do me a favor and, and open an issue? Um, mark it in, as an enhancement about defining the compatibility mode. That's absolutely something that we should be able to go through and do for this. And compatibility mode might be more than just the modern CSS rendering. There might be some other things in there where we want how we render an output markup might be maybe there's things that are more blazer appropriate that we want to do. So definitely quirks mode, Sanad, Meskin, that's another, yeah. So let's let's open an issue for that in the in the GitHub repository. Oh my gosh, Blazer Mr. Mago. IE mode? IE mode? Are you kidding? You keep using the word. No. I don't think it means what you think it means. No. I hear IE and I just wanna Go! <laughs> uh Don't do that. Don't do IE mode. But that it, it's that same concept of I wouldn't be able to output things appropriate for different uh, different things. Uh, Correa, good to see you. Welcome. Text mode. What are you doing here, Blazer, Mister Magoo? That's actually that's not a completely terrible idea. Not a completely terrible idea. 
Chromium Edge was released yesterday. Yes. Yeah. Um, this is only supposed to be a shim helping people convert to Blazor. Yes. And we don't want to keep them in the old web forms way. Stelzy, it, that's a very good perspective looking forward. It's only a shim to get them there, not keep them in the in the old web form way, web forms way. If we give them, then once they get their code working with the shim, the ability to say, okay, now make it the modern rendering. We start slowly pushing them in a direction of updating and using modern tools. Wouldn't it be funny if we put some sort of a time bomb in using the 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 shim? So after six months, it starts logging errors to the to the event log that says, "Hey, you've been using this shim for six months. Are are you actually upgrading your application here, or are you just letting it sit?" Then after a year, what the hell are you doing? You need to be upgrading at this point. That'd be funny. Annoying, but totally funny. Right? You tried the new Edge and wanted you to sign in to Twitch and you couldn't remember your username. <laughs> so, uh, friends that are that are trying out uh, the new Edge, the, uh, the new Microsoft Edge. I've been running the Canary version here locally on my machine um i have you can see i have LastPass installed for uh for firefox i have it in chrome you can also install LastPass as an extension here in edge i had it installed where did it go dave um but you can install it and then continue using your extensions, right? Your passwords across it. There it is, LastPass. So I use LastPass for for my passwords management. Um, it works great on my phone, works great in my browsers. I have it in all of my browsers, evidently except for this profile in Edge. Um, so check it out that might be a good way for you to continue moving forward with the new edge browser and i think starting next week i want to start i want to i want to try using edge exclusively here on stream and see see what we learn see what we figure out about it um similarly i'm going to get my feet wet with the new windows terminal here and figure out how to move forward with that still have twitch saved using your email address ah okay so um, bu -bu 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 -bu. A lot of comments coming in. Anyone have a good JSON viewer for Edge? That's a good question. You missed the Windows Phone Authenticator. I have the Windows Authenticator on my phone. It's slightly different. And uh, works great. Um, and, and it gives me the ability to do the face unlock or the thumbprint unlock on my iPhone to get through there. Um, thank you for the follow, Trunka, Trunka Lanka. Welcome. It's good to see you. Serious question now. Tacos or pizza for lunch? Tacos. 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 Everybody loves tacos. The last pass authenticator is really good on the, on the phone as well. Yeah, you're right. So... I, I am not myself. I, too, have a whole folder of authenticator apps on my phone. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a thing. Um, so let's look at... If I want to maintain the initial compatibility with this, I, I need these images. These two images that are here for the plus and the minus. And we're going to need to put those somewhere so that we have our, our images available for this. Um, so I'm, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to save image as, wow, look at all those gifts that I have saved locally. Um, let's see, Blazor Web Forms components. Yep. So with components, with Blazor and Razor class libraries, you can have a dub dub root folder here. And you can put things into it and they'll be accessible 
means when your component is rendered. So let's add a folder here for, oh, I can't rename it because I'm in debug mode over here. Fine, I'll rename it over here then. And I'll call it, uh, is it tree view or is it, is the V capitalized in tree view? Um, the V is capitalized. So I'm going to save it into this folder, and it's web resource axd.gif. No. This one was, which one did I choose? I'm going to choose the minus first. Save image as, and it put me back in that same folder. Bin tree view. This is the minus. So let's call this expanded. Expand, uh, let's call this node expanded. And the plus, I will save that image. And I'll call this node collapsed. So now I have those two. And we'll figure out, oh, I didn't put the JavaScript in this element, did I? For what it rendered. Let me go back there and grab the JavaScript it rendered. Oh, look at all that. It's glorious. It's gloriously ugly. That's what it is. Um, let's see, let's put another H3. It also rendered, yes, some inline JavaScript. Paste that in, and I'm going to do a quick replace on let me go through here. Um, let's do these first. Wait, we we do it. Okay. Um, we're gonna find the less uh this, and we're gonna turn it into those. Go. We're gonna go find the greater than and turn it into GTs. Thank you. All right, let's see what our code looks like now. All right, so there's our inline JavaScript that it rendered, and it does some tool tips, and it also does the show hide of items underneath of it. Right, where's it doing the show hide? Right, so when I click on those images, tree view toggle node, see that right there? Um, oh. Oh, wait a sec. Did it do what I think it did? Because I think it did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there is some JavaScript that it includes. So there's jQuery, webforms.js. Uh, no, I didn't want to do that. Click that thing, reload. It's in one of these. There is, you're not gonna let me select all in here, are you? Are you? No. Um, where is it? Oh yeah, look at that. Look at the JavaScript it rendered. You think I have more JavaScript? No, I think I got it all. Um... Let's see, let me go look at the source of this again. Oh, uh, this. Oh, the image array. Hmm, good point. Good point, good catch. Let's uh, paste that into here. All right, so there's that. 
Let me do another find and replace. Ugh. Replace those. Place those, thank you. And replace those, good. So the question is going to be Oh, you know what? Got an idea. Do that. So we end up with two blocks here. There we go. Um, get rid of some extra space here. It's a little bit better. Not great, but it's better. Um, all right. The question is going to be: <sighs> Do we copy down? Do we reuse? Can we reuse? Can we save this webforms.js and reuse this? I kind of agree with the Node.js idea. I kind of agree with it. Which means... Right, these areas here where we do the uh, it's easier to read over here. Um, thank you. Where it does the toggle node. If we do that as Blazor, that's better rendering. I think that's I think that's a good escape from from that formatting that we have there. Let me just double check. Um, I do have... Checking my schedule here. Yeah, I have a meeting I need to get to in just a little bit. Let's do this. Let's, first off... I'm not working in this. Um, so let's jump over to dev. Um, let's set up feature tree view. It's capital V. We learned that. Add these. Um, yeah. I was, I was thinking about versioning. Do I need to change the version? Um, um, I should put some docs with this all, as well. I'm not ready for it though. Um, initial exploration of the tree view with fixed nodes. Nodes, not nods. All right. Uh, git push origin feature tree view. And that's not actually going to. Well, it is going to build because of these. That's okay. Um. Is, the extension is called Escape HTML Code. I was looking for an extension for Visual Studio. Um, is this it? Um, Sinad Meskin. I don't see it. Hey, there's Code Rush. Yeah, I don't see it here. Oh, that's for Visual Studio Code, so not That's okay. So, 
we've started this exploration here. Ah, I closed my browser when I stopped. Um, I think we're in... Uh, let's get rid of that. Um, I don't have the docs here. Let's write up a quick docs page to go with this that has the link back to the tree view class over here. Um, is there a... There's what the site map looks like. I don't want a site map control, dear lord. This is a really complex control. There's declarative syntax. This is what I want. All right, let's write a quick, uh, a quick piece of documentation to show that this is where we're working on this. And we'll call it a day from here. So I'm going to go into Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code for writing Markdown is really, really good. I've had tremendous um, good feelings about writing Markdown here. Um, so I'm going to, using Visual Studio Code, it's been really, really nice. So I'm going to create tree view MD, put it right there. And I want it to look and feel like what I did for... Data list is actually a little bit more complete here. Um, so I'm actually just going to copy that content directly in and start replacing some of this. Tree view. Tree view component is meant to emulate the ASP. Tree view control is markup and is defined in the tree view class. Uh, right? This is the syntax that I want. Yes, please copy that. I'm gonna go down here to the declarative syntax and paste it right in. Okay. Whoo! Blazor syntax, all that stuff down at the bottom. We'll fill that out. These, these areas here are great. Some of these features and things are uh, in, in the documentation, it's a great way if you, you want to jump in and get involved, get started. Um, you're welcome to do that. I'm not going to include any usage notes yet. Tree view, and there's the syntax. Right? Nope, that's the wrong link. So there's an interesting feature here in Markdown that I'm exploiting. The, when you put a uh, markup like this, it's creating a hyperlink. This is the text of the hyperlink in square brackets. In parentheses is the URL to navigate to. You can have it navigate to one of your headings by putting hash and then whatever that heading text is. Where there was spaces, replace with hyphens. And you can have it navigate directly to those. So you see usage notes, usage dash notes and it'll go to this location and that's done for you automatically by the renderer thank god it's not yaml that's right sinad maskin absolutely no yaml here get your yaml out of here um yeah visual studio code is pretty awesome for many things let me create a link over to the tree view component from my readme up here so there's tree view. And that goes now into docs, tree view MD, and now I have a link over to that, connecting the components. Um, what's in the readme over here? Now we're good with that, all right. I'm going to commit those couple changes real quick here, finish cleaning up, and uh, I think we'll set up a raid. So let me, let me head over, get that Mario music playing. And we'll add those last couple changes. Um, stub tree view documentation. The documentation is an important part of this project because folks are going to want to um, learn a little bit about the project, learn what what considerations they're going to have in order to migrate and keep their user interface still working. So to have good documentation that shows here's what it did, 
here's what it does do, here's what it doesn't do, so that folks know where they're going to break, where they're going to need to make changes is very important. So there, our tree view uh, docs have now been pushed out to the project, and if you change over to the feature tree view branch, should be able to scroll down here and jump over to tree view and see what we started for the tree view class. Really great stuff. Thank you so much for the input here today. I'm, I'm really looking forward to doing some more, more work on this component, um, and we'll work on that tomorrow. Um, documentation is so important. Absolutely. Thank you, Blazer Mr. Magoo. Thank you so much for, for your help in this project. And uh, really, really appreciate working through this with all the folks in our community, uh, chipping in and helping out and feedback. Creating issues in, in the repository is just as valuable as writing code. Let me know what works well for you, what doesn't work well for you, so that we can steer the project appropriately and get to those features that need to be built sooner than later. All right, let's set up a raid. Let's see who's out there that we can raid, that we can help out with. Um, bring in a little bit of uh, a little bit of fun over to their channel. Let me head over to Twitch and let's see what's going on out on. Oh, you know who's? Um, now nah, let me take a quick look over here. Let's set up a raid to. What is this? What is this? You know, he's working on some graphics, and he's it, and it looks like there's a absolute blast happening happening over there. We're gonna set up a raid. There's the here comes the raid call. If you're a subscriber, copy the top line right here. If you're not a subscriber, copy the second line. Copy that out on the clipboard because we're gonna set up and go raid our friend. He's another live coder. We're gonna raid Insta Fluff. He's working on some graphics for his channel, it looks like, over there. And if you've seen InstaFluff before, you know he is an amazing streamer. So much fun and, and a great educator. I hope you have fun. Get ready to say hi to InstaFluff, and I will see you tomorrow for more fun with Blazor, more fun with HTML, and we're going we're gonna to get folks moving off of web forms. Take care. <laughs>